So the absolute first step that needs to be carried out if someone has a suspected stroke is a CT head scan. And the main reason is that you want to exclude a hemorrhage. So roughly about 75 or 80 percent of strokes are caused by a clot, so an ischemic stroke. However, about 15 to 20 percent is caused by a hemorrhage. And the reason it is important to know whether someone has had a hemorrhage or not is that the medications that you use for ischemic strokes would likely make a hemorrhage much worse, such as aspirin. So if a hemorrhage has been excluded, the first step is to give the patient 300 milligrams of aspirin straight away. And importantly, they need to stop taking any anticoagulants that they may have already been taking. This may sound counterintuitive, but I'll get onto that point a bit later on. So once the aspirin has been given, the next step would be to figure out how long has it been since the patient developed symptoms. And if it's been less than 4.5 hours since the onset of symptoms, then they should be considered for thrombolysis with something like alteplase. If it's more than 4.5 hours after the onset of symptoms, it's generally thought that the damage has been done and that conservative management should be followed. One slight caveat to this is that there have been a lot of improvements in thrombectomy technology. So in patients who have presented with a stroke and it's less than six hours, or in some cases even up to 24 hours, uh, after the onset of symptoms and the imaging shows that there is a decent area of brain that could be salvaged, then thrombectomy may be considered. But of course you need to have the right personnel and the right facilities around to be able to achieve this. So let's say a patient has presented with a stroke, they've been started on 300 milligrams of aspirin daily. This will continue for two weeks and then after two weeks they will be switched from aspirin to clopidogrel 75 milligrams once daily for life. And it's only at this point that you actually consider anticoagulation. So the reason that anticoagulation, even prophylactic tenzaparin, isn't given to patients who've had a stroke is that during the first couple of weeks after having an ischemic stroke, there is a relatively high risk of hemorrhagic transformation, which means that you get bleeding into the space in which the stroke occurred. So to reduce the risk of this happening, or rather to uh, not make it any worse, anticoagulants are avoided for the first couple of weeks after having a stroke. Once someone has had a stroke, it's important to investigate to try and figure out well, why did they actually have this stroke. And there's three main sources of clots in patients who've had a stroke. So it could be structural heart disease, such as an abnormal valve, it could be atrial fibrillation, or it could be carotid atherosclerosis. So the investigations that you would recommend in these circumstances include an echocardiogram to uh, assess the valves, ECGs and ambulatory ECG monitoring to try and detect AF and carotid dopplers for carotid atherosclerosis. So one thing I want to make really clear at this point is that uh, at a finals level you're sort of expected to know some of these um, critical drug doses uh, off the tip of your tongue and something that a lot of students get confused between because they use similar medications uh, are stroke and ACS management. So I'm going to try and put them side by side to try and consolidate it in your head. So stroke management, first thing you do, like I mentioned earlier, is a CT head scan. After that, provided that a hemorrhage has been excluded, you give them aspirin 300 milligrams once daily for two weeks, and you stop any anticoagulants that they may already have been on. Long term, so after that two weeks has passed, they will be switched from aspirin to clopidogrel 75 milligrams once daily for life, and anticoagulants may be considered depending on the indication. So it's sort of depending on what the findings were of those investigations I mentioned earlier. ACS management, on the other hand, has a few more agents involved. So you start dual antiplatelet therapy, usually aspirin 300 milligrams stapped and either 300 milligrams of clopidogrel or 180 milligrams of tacagrelor. That is just a stat dose. So after that stat dose has been given on the first day, they will continue on dual antiplatelet therapy, but at a lower dose. So usually it's 75 milligrams of aspirin for life along with either 75 milligrams of clopidogrel for one year or tacagrelor 90 milligrams twice daily for one year. One other point to remember with ACS management is that you're likely to give either heparin like unfractionated heparin or fondaparinux um, to establish some degree of anticoagulation as well depending on whether someone is going for a PCI imminently or whether they've been diagnosed with an NSTEMI which may at some point in the near future require an angiogram. So I hope that clarifies the differences between ACS and stroke management. The key take home point is that with stroke management, they're only really ever on one antiplatelet at a time and you switch between the two at two weeks. Whereas in ACS, you are on dual antiplatelets and you may also have some anticoagulants involved as well.
Thank you.